This is Radio Free Cybertron 664. I am a Brian Kilby with me this week. We do not have Matt because we're talking some Beast Wars. And he's exhausted from work and everything. But I think and from Beast Wars. I think it's Beast Wars. And uh, we don't have John DeLuna either yet. He may be here. He's here in, I- in iconography. His icon, if you're watching the video, is right there. He tends to speak up when you least expect it. He does. Much like me, XV. This is true. Uh, <laughs> also, I thought the other guy was XV uh, in the orange shirt. I guess it's diecast. Yes, I'm in a brighter orange shirt than Chris. No, your lights are just more directly on you. No, I'm just brighter. You can't get a brighter orange shirt than what I'm wearing, I guarantee you. We checked. Is it, is it, is it like safety orange? Well, I mean, remember, remember at the uh, mini golf? Yeah. So, you know, pretty much that. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, there's also <laughs> Rob. Hi. Hi, Rob. <laughs> there's Don. He may be wearing orange, but we do not know. Yeah. Nope, blue. I would have guessed blue. And hello to all of our <laughs> friends in our chat at tfradio.net slash discord. If you're not in the discord chat, you're, you know, you're not in the right place. Nah, there are people in the YouTube chat, too. I'm just not glancing at it as often as I used to. Because, doggone it, Discord, it's everybody, no matter where you're watching, you can chat with us in Discord. Whether it's, uh, yeah, I don't Facebook. go into the YouTube chat at all. I have so. to. But, yeah. Hello, YouTube. But, but the Discord is our primary unified chat platform at it this is. point. TFRadio.net slash Discord. You don't even need to install the program on your computer. You can just launch it from your browser, although we don't guarantee your experience when you do. It's the grand unified chat of Theory. RFC. And also, Why? it's 24-7. You can chat 24-7 oh, yeah. with Discord. Yeah, we've got, we got a nice little community of people in here, and there's usually activity throughout the week, which uh, honestly surprised me. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I like it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I like oh, it. I'm not. I'm not complaining. It's cool to see people hanging around. Uh, it's cool to see you there because I never thought you would actually go to that, and you're there a lot. Ah, but I always make sure that nobody can tell when I'm there. Ah. <laughs> cool. Hey, so uh, we had an announcement during our live stream uh, during the Toy Fair weekend that uh, we're going to do a, a promotion. I think we're calling it Full Time Toy Detective. Uh, that uh, Robin Chris would be uh, coming on and doing uh, sort of taking over some some uh, work. And they both had an announcement that they made earlier this week. Do you guys want to tell us about it or do you want me to just read what I, I wrote on Patreon? In your, um, in your I mean, words, it would probably be better. Okay. Um, I guess I guess I will, you know, I'll give it a shot. Um as of the first of this month, uh, Chris and I do not uh, write for tformers.com anymore. We had been there for, I'd say, what, seven or eight, eight years. years? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we, have, we have our own reasons uh, for leaving, but... Uh, they just, just happened to my, line up in timing. I don't think... Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it was just kind of ha- uh, how it uh, worked out, but... I do want to say thanks to uh, Bacon Jack for just bearing with me, especially across the last year when everything was on fire and, you know, three, three members of my family, including myself were in the hospital and yeah, he, he just was really He's kind and guy. patient. He is. Jack's been, Jack's been fantastic for the entire stretch of time that we've been there. Um, tolerant of things that I certainly huh. probably wouldn't be if I was in his position and, you know, things were reversed like he's been through he's been with us through thick and thin on a lot of stuff and like we're super grateful to him for everything he's done all the opportunities he's opened up to us over these years uh also i don't want to discredit i want to give a shout out like peter van who sadly is not you know with us on the podcast anymore but he made the initial introductions between me and rob and jack uh to actually get us in the door there in the first place so you know without peter none of that ever would have happened in the first place. So like it's been, it's been involving, you know, more than a few people and it's been, we've been glad to do it. And it just kind of was time to move on for various reasons. And yeah, one thing I want to clarify, a lot of people have a think that we are operated by T formers and we're, so we've, we've been the official podcast T formers for like 10 years. 
And I, I love T-formers. I continue, I plan to continue still using it and using it on the podcast. And as far as I know, that's not changing. Um, and, you know, I, I appreciate Jack and everything he's done. But, you know, we are independent, wholly independent. We, I don't know that, which existed first, RFC or T-formers? RFC had to have. Well, I mean, the T-formers, yeah, domain, but there's, a, do, there's a domain form. that pre, there's a domain they had before, and I can't remember what it was. But yeah, so, uh, but like Rob and Chris, uh, of course, were part of RFC before we were the official T Formers podcast and before they worked for T Formers. And it was an actual job. So uh, they both, uh, it was a paid gig. They both worked for T Formers. Um, so uh, with that being said, you know, th- this leaves opportunity for them, you know, needing some more work. So what we decided to do was uh, take this opportunity to um, try to, uh, grow one of our segments or platforms on the the website. We've uh, had a, the RFC Daily News Update podcast on the site going back three years, and due to work and stuff, I just haven't been able to manage it like I would like to. So we're actually rebranding it and calling it the RFC uh, News Desk, and they will be taking that over. Uh, not just doing podcast stuff for that, but they'll also be doing the occasional blog post. But I think most of the content that they take over is going to be uh, podcast related because that's what we are. We're a podcast and we're leaning into that. But we really want to expand into that uh, sort of uh, podcast news stuff because honestly, that's how I that's how I consume all my news is through podcasts. And that's the kind of the way the world's going. So we, we are leaning into that. And uh, this was an opportunity for them to, you know, get uh, do a different gig and also to help us grow. So uh, it's a, it's going to be a, a pretty awesome endeavor for us. It's risky because there's cost involved. Uh, and, you know, at the, the beginning, we're, we're operating at a loss. Uh, so, you know, with, with the Patreon and everything, we, we've basically gotten to the point where the podcast – breaks even but with this it'll be operating at a loss but we're trying to figure out ways that we can uh pay for that so we're going to continue plugging our amazon link but one thing we'd actually like to do is uh you know reach out to our fans and with our patreon that we just recently launched and we are going to uh, have a patreon uh promotion that we're going to run uh actually i have this written down so that i will not I forget anything. So we're going to add, we're going to call it the full-time toy detectives promotion. It'll run for, I think two months. And the, uh, what that includes uh, initially, it'll be, there'll be a monthly toy detectives podcast for all tiers. So no matter what tier you are, we're not adding anything new as far as like tiers go. Uh, and once we hit our goal and our goal is actually only $500 a month. So, which is only about twice what we have now. So it's only like an additional 250, so once we hit the goal of uh, $500 a month, uh, it'll actually become a twice monthly podcast. But uh, that monthly podcast will be for the duration of the uh, the promotion. But that'll be cool. It'll be a chance to like really nerd out with toys. Like the stuff that I really love that uh, Rob and Chris do at T-Formers was like the really nerdy toy exploration stuff. And that's what I hope to get out of that podcast. I think that'll be great. And especially with the toy detective stuff, too, there is still an intent to have like, you know, written support material for that, too, yes. for deeper dive so nobody's having to sit there and listen to me droning on for like 45 minutes at a time about how tall i think this micromaster is in real life <laughs> for instance yeah like when it comes to the podcast stuff what i think you know our rfc super fans on, on patreon i like to think of them as the nerdiest of the nerdy and i want to have some of the nerdiest stuff on our patreon so and for that uh, as a reward that'll be a, a patreon exclusive podcast so that'll be to patrons only i'm pretty excited about that like I said, once we hit our goal, that'll become uh, twice monthly. And if we don't hit our goal, it'll probably go away. So, you know, help us out. Uh, we'll be promoting the heck out of this once it starts on the podcast and Facebook and everything. Uh, yeah, uh, we're still uh, doing a lot of work behind the scenes to figure out how exactly all of this is going to lay out. But uh, we're pretty excited about what we've got in mind so far. Yeah, yeah, really super stoked about this. Uh, also, for the patrons on Patreon, it'll, we'll have an ad-free version of the News Desk podcast. That's if we ever let to do ads. We're not starting off with ads, but, you know, to help pay for this, uh, eventually we, we might. So, uh, but if you are a patron, it'll be uh, uh, ad-free forever. We'll also have uh, thank you credits on uh, News Desk posts. Uh, we're going to memorialize you forever on the RFC credits site. 
and uh, we'll have uh, patron shout outs on news episodes. So uh, each episode will have uh, one or two uh, producer credits at the end, uh, thanking everyone for uh, that. And you'll also have our undying appreciation. So we are super excited about this. Like I said, it'll uh, run for about 60 days. Uh, the goal is just $500 a month, which I said is about twice what we have now. And our Patre- Patreon's new. We've only had it for a couple months, so I think we're doing good. I think we can definitely hit that. But we'll need your help. Uh, so, And uh, the, that'll start this weekend. I think that's when I will start uh, sharing out links to that. So, But uh, you can go ahead and help us out now if you want to. Patreon.com slash TF Radio. Uh, all patrons, existing patrons, this will they'll retroactively apply on this. So it's pretty cool. And this applies to all tiers. This isn't something where you have to be on our super special touched patron level. Uh, this applies to every single one. So pretty cool. So but we uh, certainly appreciate you if you were, you know, joining the touched level just to support this. Oh yeah. We I, heck with um twenty twenty people at the touch level, you know, we would have it. Yeah. So uh we're also with this uh not only will it be on the website at tfradio.net, uh, actually, the stuff that we have now, I, I've moved to the front page. Uh, it's stuff that we've had up um, through Toy Fair and going back to 2017. Uh, along the left side of the front page at tfradio.net, uh, we have the RSC News Desk there. Like I said, it'll be a podcast and a uh, and uh, some blogs and stuff. Um but uh, it'll also uh, go out as a newsletter probably twice a week, I'm guessing. Uh, our RFC Insider newsletter is uh, – this is going to sort of drive that. And we have a contest to uh, help promote that. Uh, we're going to run it through Pi Day, which is March 14th. Uh, we're giving away a prize pack worth 150 bucks. It's a lot of stuff from the last several Transformers lines, Transformers card game stuff. There's a lot there. And to, uh, to enter that, just go to tfradio.net. And click on the RFC Insider, uh, the RFC Insider logo. I can actually, Brian, we're running video, so you can actually show people. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And homepage, RFC Insider. And it'll take you to the news page. Just along the, the first thing you'll see on the left-hand side is just a little sign-up box. And that's it. Sign up. Uh, we also have, uh, if you are on Twitter... Uh, Ed, you can follow at TF Radio. You get an extra entry if you retweet or tweet about it. Uh, but uh, that is that's all you have to do. And we're going to announce the winner on March 14th. So that would be awesome if you can help us out. We would love it. We would love it. Oh gosh, what else is going on? There's a lot of stuff going on this week. Uh, oh, I'm also doing a contest myself. I, I'm still clearing out office space, and I am giving away. Uh, make toys visualizer set. Um, it's like, it's missing like one or two little camera bits. That's the reason I'm giving it away and not selling it on eBay. It's like missing two small pieces that aren't that important. Uh, it should, you can follow me at B Gilby, uh, and you can see it right there. I think I have it as my pinned tweet. If not, I'll fix it. But I think that ends this weekend. So if you are listening to this in 2033, you missed it. You still follow me on Twitter or whatever whatever social media platform is out there. At this point, I'll just be glad if we're still around in some capacity in 2033. I don't mean the show. I mean, just like us personally still existing in 2033. Um, you know, honestly, I'd be, I'd be surprised at this point if we're not, at least as a podcast. (sighs) I mean, yeah. 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 No, I don't want to think about still being here doing the podcast in 13 years. Yeah. I will. I, th- I think at this point we'll, that. yeah, and in twelve, what that's what thirteen years will be fifty three, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, being the longest running Transformers podcast is at least something for the history books. John, is, <laughs> oh yes, John's right. John is right. We'll be reviewing the latest G one Prime and the Generations line at that point. He is <sighs> not wrong, and that is so sad. Yeah. Okay. Uh I, I don't have anything else to plug. Chris, do you want to talk about what you got this week? Okay. This will be relatively quick. Uh, so one of our very devoted fans uh, got me something nice off of my Amazon wish list, tfradio.net slash chrislist. Uh, purchases from that also go toward helping to fund our uh, ongoing project here at the podcast. Uh, it is the Legacy Collection uh, Dragon Dagger from uh, 
Bandai. One of the that last things. Is nice. This is this is the uh, reissue one that Bandai basically rolled out as late as they could before the license transferred over to Hasbro when they were kind of pulling a fun pub. Um, so this is the one that's got like diecast metal and stuff in it. It's very solid and it hefty. does. Um, I yeah. didn't realize that diecast well, adds quality. Always. <laughs> Uh, so as you may have heard, this does make noise. I'm not doing that because it's fairly loud and, you know, actually to make the noise, the, uh, mouthpiece is a little switch. You have to push down to get the, the sounds to play. So it would have to be right up by my mouth and it would be kind of blasting through the microphone, but it's, it's very nice. It feels, you know, hefty, high quality in the hand. Um, I'm still kind of interested in the Hasbro one because they've uh, made the electronics work a little bit different way than this, where it's a little bit more like role play interactive. Um, but like, I'm really happy to have this. Uh, it's, this is like the prop replica kind of level one where the other one is like more like fancy high end toy. Uh, so I think both will have a place in my collection at some point, but like, thank you so much to the anonymous benefactor who sent this. I've already uh, been in touch with him directly via Twitter. Uh, so he knows who he is. I've thanked him directly for this. Um, this was a really cool thing to get a major surprise. I was not ever expecting this to actually come in off the wish list. Um, but that's all I've got for this week. Uh, I may have some more interesting to talk about next week if shipping moves, you know, at a decent speed, but who knows? That's so, uh, <clears throat> that's awesome. Yeah. It is awesome. <laughs> Sorry, in, in the YouTube chat, I know it's off the Discord. Uh, two things. Prime Bryce's birthday is tomorrow. Happy birthday. And Rodham Supreme says huh. in 2033, we'll be talking about buying deluxes for 50 bucks. Also not wrong. Also yeah. very soon. Yeah. And Rodham Supreme's like, watch Brian actually die on the live stream. Very possible. Oh. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, anybody else? Rob, did you get anything? Yeah, I got I got a couple of things. Um, first off, I did get a couple of uh, games for that Switch Lite that uh, I was given off of uh, tfradio.net slash playlist last week. Wait, did I, I miss that? I must have I must have zonked out or something last you, week. I, apparently, you blacked out. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I think I, was, I think you did comment at the time. <laughs> yeah, I was I was gifted a Switch Lite by the by uh, I believe the same benefactor Holy behind. Crap. But at any rate, um, I, uh, I will, one of the first thing I wanted to get for it, obviously was the version of dragon quest 11 that has both the 2d and 3d versions. Uh, and like just serendipitously, it went on sale for 37 50, like two days after the switch light appeared, uh, arrived. So got that. It's, it's, it is a lovely game. I have been it playing it so far exclusively in 2d mode. I am enjoying it a lot. The crafting system is nice. Um, I also, I got collection of mana today because that is the first time that uh, Seiken Densets 3 has ever been available in English officially. That was 20 bucks from Best Buy shipped. Um, and also this week, man, just last week, w w there was some fun stuff. So shortly after, uh, shortly after uh, Toy Fair, uh, John DeLuna asked if oh, anybody yes. want anybody wanted this uh, uh, Master Grade Gundam model uh, that he need to get uh, rid of, and it's like, yes, yes, please. <laughs> and not he not only sent me the Master Grade Sazbi, which is um, Char Asimov's mobile suit from the movie Char's Counterattack. It is a very complex mobile suit. It is, and the box is huge. The box has to be more than two feet across. And it is just, I, I am working on that very slowly and taking my time, but it is just glorious. And John also decided to send along a couple of other master grade kits. The very first original Gundam kit U S release. So it has the skill level stuff on the package. I haven't seen forever and the goof custom, which, you know, is another one of those ones I always wanted to get, but never got my hands on. On top of all that, a couple of vintage uh, Gundam catalogs from when the uh, band I was still releasing that stuff uh, here. I don't think I've had any of those on hand in forever. And if that wasn't enough, he also sent along a couple of PlayStation 4 games, the uh, Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 anthology and a copy of Bloodborne, which I had played for myself, but had borrowed from my brother. So great to have a copy of that for myself. And yeah. 
just that was an uh, that was an amazingly kind thing to do. Just an awesome box of stuff to get all at once. So thank you, John. Really great. John's amazing. He is. Cool. Who else? I'll go, Brian. Well, after, as I mentioned last week, I was going to go out last Thursday and do a toy crawl because there's nothing locally turning Oh, you up, called me during this. Hit. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. And, I love uh, when Don calls me. I'm not, I'm not joking. It, it actually makes my day. Yeah. One th- this is this is my own, this is my only really off topic thing, but I do want to show it off, and I sent Brian a picture of this. This is at Walmart for twenty dollars. It's a Robbie the Robot. Oh yeah, from um, Forbid you know from uh, Forbidden Planet, and it's only twenty dollars. There's there's also an Iron Giant, but this is more. This is so retro, but it's also like one of the first robots on screen that was this complicated. And it's 20 but I, I just can't imagine you're getting this kind of – this much toy for 20 bucks. And I will hold it away because it has a few sound effects, but I will hold it away from the microphone. For your convenience, I am monitored to respond to the name Robbie. <laughs> Welcome to Al Air Boy, gentlemen. I have to I mean, and it's just this really great for twenty bucks. I'm not even taking it out of the box. It's just a really beautiful looking display piece. So I picked that up and I, I, I texted the, the picture of that. I didn't even know these things existed until I saw it. Um, yeah, my my own Walmart's top. here all had them, and I I've been yeah, so been, tempted. They've been out since um, January at least. Yeah, something mm-hmm. like that. Well. My local Walmart has not got anything new in except for maybe the Marvel Legends Fantastic Four wave once, and Encore and Encore and Astro Trains. That's and one set of Megatron and Mixed Master from Studio Series. That's all the new stuff I've seen. Um, first stop on the toy crawl, I picked up Earthrise Astro Train uh, because I felt maybe the Siege might be a harder one to find. So down the road, he might be worth more in trade or something because of a packaging variation or nothing else. Plus, I was able to get the $10 each back on Grapple and Starscream thanks to the seven-day return what policy at Target. So I got him, so I got him for uh, $29.99 with the, uh, the, with the money I saved on that. So I've got an Astro Train to open. Second stop, I found the MicroMasters. Uh, Growl and Drop Shot and Hubs and Big Betty. I got them mainly because they were on sale because they're Micro Masters, you know, the G1 Micro Masters with ball joints. But the Decepticons, this team has always been one of my favorites. So I'm looking forward to hopefully getting the rest of them, but I'm not going to hold it. Although I don't think Daddy O will be, ever be as good as Big Daddy. The Walmart hmm. Big Daddy, who's still one of my favorite figures. But I got the MicroMasters. The third target I went to, because uh, there's four down in that area on the way to Pizza Inn, uh, I picked up Ironworks and Will Jack. Uh, the, the gentleman was nice enough to go to the back and double check when they saw there was more in the back than what, what they were saying. And it was these two. I did not find Hoist and, uh, Hoist and Cliff Jumper, so I'm still looking for those. Um, and the last one I got at the fourth target was Optimus Prime, and I got him for thirty five ninety nine. How'd you do that? Well, there's a story there. Uh, Good <laughs> because of the, yeah because of the sale, I decided to, I was going to pick up that fourth Cyberverse Shockwave. That's all they had on the shelf was one Shockwave, and I thought I'm not big about the crab tank mode, but at ten dollars being half off. I can sell someone the head or the part that comes with from Academy for like five bucks. Someone who needs the part, and I'll just have five bucks in Shockwave. Well, it rang up that it couldn't be sold until June first, <laughs> which is which is weird because I've I already bought the other three and purposely left Shockwave behind because at twenty bucks, I really didn't care that much at twenty bucks for ten bucks and so forth. I thought I was going to get them. They, so, must, they must have updated the system for Wave Two, which Target probably has street dated for June first. Possibly, yeah. I didn't think I didn't I didn't even think about that. 
So um, I asked the manager, the manager that was over the front end, if that was right, because, you know, I'd already bought the other three. And they said, apparently, and I don't know if you've already bought them. It could be something being in a different state. It could be a computer issue. But he, he did not have the power to override it. He said, what I can do is, is I can give you, because since the figure would cost $10, that the one you would have gotten, I'll just take $10 off this one. I thought, okay, that's fair. But when I got home and checked the receipt, they did it at $35.99, not $39.99. So I got Optimus for $35.99. Hmm. So, and the other one thing I got is As I've, John I've says in our chat, it. is that a great deal? No. It's a Don deal. Don deal. Hey, and, and hey, deal. now that I'm forgetting, now that I'm forgetting, I didn't plug it. Don Deal, episode six, was posted to the website tfradio.net. It's also in our um, it's also in our podcast feed. It is the return of Don Deal. It's been like a year and a half since we posted an episode, and it was so fun to record. We're going to do it yeah. monthly, and we're going to stream it live to Patreon and Discord. So even if you're not a patron, you can watch it at tfradio.net slash Discord. We'll announce it, and hopefully yeah. next time we'll take calls. And it felt sort of like, you know, it, it felt like it felt it was a little weird getting back on the bicycle again, but I, it, it was a lot of fun for me. It was well. a lot last, of fun. Yeah. Not last doing it after I this got, podcast makes a huge difference. Yeah. Uh, last thing I got, I, I forgot to get it from when I unboxed it. But thanks to an eBay sale, when I had five dollars and something and I sold it for sixty five, I made a little bit of money. So I got. Civil Warrior General Grant, uh, the Optimus Prime War for Cybertron with the flight pack. So I figured, hey, I've got 50 bucks out of pocket now for this figure. And, after, and it's never been my favorite Optimus, but I think that's also because the Generations one is so complicated to transform. There wasn't a lot of fun there. But after watching some reviews for the Civil Warrior version, I went ahead and picked it up. So I'm going to look forward to opening that up. Uh, uh, probably tomorrow when I've got a little, little more time because they were installing Windows all day about today. Time, right? Hmm? It's Enough. the fire in which we burn, Brian. Yes. Yeah. But the third so, uh, time tonight, I got a doctor. Yeah. Oops, I hit my. I got a doctor Sarin this weekend at Ed McKay's. Spoilers. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wasn't yeah. going to share it. So I got a, after you sure, I always oh, share my Star Trek figures I get from yeah. McKay's. I got a bunch. I don't so care. After, so after a month of not finding anything locally, I finally got some stuff. So, yeah. Nice. Oh, I saw some of the MKs when I was when I was there. It was uh, Cisco as a Klingon. They had one for like three bucks. I don't have that one. I was going to call. I was going to call you, Chris, and I just forgot. Call me. Oh, I saw it and I was. Well, <laughs> I didn't. Know, well, Brian, I I didn't I didn't think you bought those for some reason. I Do you not you, pay attention? I, well, it's hard to remember who does what after so Brian, many this years. Is, Brian, this is what happens notebook. when you don't talk about getting these on the podcast. This Don has done. no way of knowing. Yeah, you got a point. <laughs> and especially like if you you know tweet about them or whatever while Don is on TFYLP talking about yeah. uh, Masterpiece RC before he does here. It's Twitter content normally. It's not podcast content for me. Yeah. Yeah. I got a bunch. I buy these figures too, mostly to copy Chris and Mickey, but you know. Cool. I mean, they're they are so easy to find usually, and they barely cost anything outside of like a few exceptional cases. Yeah, it, they're I, a, they're a really good vintage thing to collect if you just want to like get into genuinely nice, you know, like early nineties action figures. You so can get a lot of them in package for under six dollars. In the chat, Italian Spider Man is that is that Sean? I'm assuming that's I think Sean. that's Sean. Yeah, I I never it caught that it was like Sean. I never caught that it was Sean, but it looks like Sean. Uh, he said yeah, Brian has a, a Clockwork Orange figure. Yes, yes, that's basically what it is, <laughs> Doctor Sarin. Okay, Don, hey, anything else? Don, tell people they need to go download and listen to a, a Don Deal episode six. Well, I I don't want to be self serving, but it is a kind <sighs> of a, it is kind of a fun. Uh, it is kind of a fun podcast, and uh, we cover a lot of good stuff. And I think my my leaving money on the table this time was pretty pretty good, uh, just from uh, and with some editing, it was pretty standpoint. great. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, so if if you if you if you can stand listening to my voice for forty five minutes or so, uh, go take a listen. Tell me and, and give me some feedback. Tell me what you think. Yeah, for just so I know how to make the make the best show possible. Yes, yes. Okay, diecast. You have something? Looks like you, you're holding stuff in your hand. Yeah, I got I got something. Uh, here's the box. Here's the box. It's yeah, the same thing I got. No, I got the DK fourteen DNA upgrade kit for uh, Ultra Magnus hmm. for my Siege Ultra Magnus, which makes him taller. And gives him weapons. Why does Ultra Magnus need an axe? He's got an axe and he's got a hammer. The hammer I just put on the back. Ultra Magnus doesn't carry that crap. But okay, uh, this How Ultra does, Magnus he has a birthday cake and a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How so, does it make him taller? I mean, what do, what do you add on the bottom to make him taller? You replace the, the leg. bottom in the middle. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. It, I thought the lower legs looked longer. Yeah. Here's the. I'm trying to get it in frame. Here's the original yeah. legs, and there's the extended legs. They're they're only about probably a half an inch taller, but it makes all the difference for this figure. Uh, I'm just that. amazed at how good it looks. And I also have this is the one I put the Doctor Wu upgrade kit on. So I've got two upgrade kits going on this guy. Oh yeah, that's got the 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 Doctor Wu thing is the gap fillers, isn't it? Yes. Cool. Yeah. Well, so you got a quick I'm question for you. I'm surprised DNA Designs did an axe instead of like the the Icon Relic Hammer from the Prime cartoon because like that's at least a thing that ended up being associated with Ultra Magnus. He has a hammer. Oh, never mind. Yeah. What a dinky <laughs> little hammer. Yeah, yeah I know. It could stand to be. But no, I have a quick question for you, Diecast. Yeah. How does it look? How does it look in just the base robot mode without the uh, without the uh, armor? How what do the new legs do to the proportions there? It if you leave it tall, it looks odd. But there okay. is a way to shrink the legs down. Oh, neat! When he's huh. in that mode, yes. Yeah, so I like that. That's nice. Yeah, you how can much have was that him. Ish. Uh, As always, I'm asking you for a ballpark price because I know full well you never know how much you actually pay for any. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm gonna guess. I hate 25? you so much. Five. <laughs> That's not yeah, bad. that sounds about that sounds cool. about right. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, happy birthday, Ultra Magnus. Oh, um, Italian Spider Sean wants to know if it came with the storage asteroid. Nice. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Man, now I want an add-on storage asteroid thing for a transformer. That's I also called, got a Magic Square Silver Bullet, which is their blue streak. And it just came yesterday, so I didn't open it up. The DNA kit I was actually putting together while I was uh, in the chat before the show started at the on the Discord. You should and do a quick hit. video for that uh, Ultra Magnus upgrade kit because, like, I didn't know before about the collapsing leg thing. Anyway, do please it, continue. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, have they done a Have they done a blue blue streak yet with that mold? I don't know. Okay. I'm sure it's only a matter of time. If not, yeah, yeah, they like to reuse molds. and time, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I also got the reflector, which is their video team. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then the last thing I got is a little ridiculous, but a little. Oh, let's see. I don't know what this is. I got the uh, that De- Devil Savior. Is this the yeah. one we talked about? This is the one that actually has mask on the front instead of mass instead of uh, Mac. Oh, yeah, that one. What is it supposed to be? Yeah, it's a, it. it it's That's a third, a pa- it's a third party mix master. master. It's third yeah, party. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a third party um, devastator. devastator. Yes, I've oh. heard this thing is an engineering nightmare. I've heard that too. Yeah, I haven't heard <laughs> yes. that. Yeah, that 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 should be interesting. I don't look yeah. forward to opening it. Opening this. Um, again, everybody gonna take a drink, but I, I watched the uh, update Mgo put on Twitter about it, and it's just a pile of parts <laughs> in the floor. Okay. Literally, just well, that's because I'm drunk. 
it, instead of burning it like I would do, he he just smashed it on the floor. Wow. So. <sighs> cool. Did he mail it to himself first and smash it with a hammer? I can't think I've ever been that frustrated by a toy I've oh, bought. I have. Well, I've fair enough, I, but you know. <laughs> uh, anything else, Diecast? No, that's that's it actually. Is it just me left? John's not here. Rob, you went. Don went. Chris, okay. Uh, I will try to do this in the order of least complex to most complex. So oh, some Star Trek figures done. Oh, well, I'm, they're all over there in a box. I don't know what's what I have. Um, so I I probably already have it, but uh, I was at McKay's <laughs> and whenever I see a robot, obviously that's where my eyes go. And this is uh, the Rescue Bots. Uh, I'm pretty sure I, I have the character at least. If there's another version, but it's uh, Hoist the Toe Bot. It was five bucks. And it was really nice, so uh, it's really clean. For an eight-year-old toy, it I mean, it looks like it's been very well-maintained, so that's not bad. Oh, crap, I forgot about this. Uh, this I deluxe rescue bot so bad. Yeah, I know. Um, so I was at Burlington. I don't know if you guys, if that's a national chain. Burlington Coat Factory? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. I've always thought of it as a regional chain, and it was a national well, they they certainly used to have them like in the Chicago area in the nineties. Gotcha. I don't know if it's still that far up there, but like I think they I think they get around. Yeah, and they're definitely still around here. So I don't does this batteries on this work? Um, I don't even know. It's got batteries in it, but I forever like the the failed um, Transformers uh, mascot character squeaks. I got oh. the, a mask. Does it actually work? No. Hello and squeaks. Look at me. <laughs> uh, That's terrible. Yeah, it's got it's got batteries, but it says on, but it's not doing anything. It's probably lights. The battery's probably dead because you know they're probably cheap because I probably saw the movie. Uh, what else did I get? I got. I broke down and got it because I my Walmart finally got it. I got uh, Astro Train, the huh. reissue. Probably shouldn't have, but. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. But you do a lot of things you probably shouldn't. Yeah. Well, I, you know, as someone else who bought Astro Train, I'll be honest, Brian, there's something about having a nice minty, even though you I know it's toy. not vintage, it's, it's, but it's, it's nice having one just in the box because the box art is just so nice and it's just makes you feel good like you were younger again. You got a new toy. Like when the world right? was new. Yes. It makes Don feel like he was 21 again. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. What else <laughs> I got? I got... So, Rob So Rob Springer. I saw where DVD posted to Facebook, Dave Van Domlin, that uh, Walmart has in Transformers Easter Baskets. And what I love is that uh, <laughs> as soon as I pointed it out, Rob Springer's like, you know, I already got that right. I've had that for like a week. So it's a Transformers Easter basket at Walmart. It's full of crap. It's not like the awesome old Easter baskets had the knockoffs, which were, it was like 20 years ago. Twin, yes. Sean's like, last week Brian said he wouldn't buy it. Well, Brian eats his words a lot. Brian says a lot of things. Brian's, Brian says lots. <laughs> it's Frank Millerism. Uh, Brian says the darndest things. Brian says the darndest things. So this thing has in it... Um, like a gigantic uh, Transformers bubble thing with soap. It's got the world's crappiest Transformers water bottle in it. It's got a big, when I say big, I'm saying like two and a half inches, three inches, uh, super bouncy ball. Some generic chalk with the Transformers logo on the box. And a 42-piece sticker set. And goodness knows if there's anything else in it. So I got that. Um, I got this because it was like twenty bucks. Never, never got it. Never picked it up before. It's the Optimus Primal. This what year of the something or other year of the whatever? Um, what is it? It's the uh, oh yeah, Super Primal Prime. Probably year. Yeah, isn't there a year of the monkey? Probably. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I, I, I just, think that's probably what it is. I just got a paper cut opening it. Oh my god, that hurts! Oh, that sucks! Oh, it that sucks! Right. Be careful! 
Be yeah, careful. I saw Brian get this, and I was like, "Do I want that?" And I was like, "Nah." Monkey attack. How much? How much did you pay for it? The sound effects make no sense. I don't remember what the. No, it wasn't Super Primal Prime. This was the Air Attack. Op- no, no, not Air Attack. What yeah. was it? Yeah, yeah, it was Air Attack yeah, Optimus it, Primal. It, Air yeah. Attack Optimus, just in the Primal Prime colors. Ah, uh, yeah. So, I don't remember what the. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what the sound effects was. Oh God, it hurts. So I got that. Yeah, was like twenty of course, bucks. I just happened to have an Air Attack Optimus Primal here to uh, hold up on video. Mine's in a box oh, somewhere. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I dare not put this in the box anymore because I understand the. Um, Swirly-ish brown plastics on the legs and other parts uh, may be starting to be prone to uh, degradation. Yeah. I only have five things left. Um, okay. Yeah, so I finally got uh, Sound Barrier. My local. Nice. Uh, I, How many do you have now? Um. So how do I put this? I got one. Numerically? I got one because the target that I went to, someone had bought th- of the box of eight toys. They left uh, the two of the sm- uh, Smashdowns, four of the Smashdowns. I guess they dropped one of the sound barriers, and I was able to find it. Um, yesterday, Kim found two more for me, and... Um, I was going to keep both of those, but a friend of ours who um, had a hor- horrible, unfortunate uh, event happen this weekend, not naming names, because I, I mean, he posted it publicly. Hey, it was uh, our buddy Vice Grip X, who, um, who's been on the podcast. He's been involved off and on for years. Uh, his Transformers, um, his Transformers uh, collection in his storage building, storage building was broken into, and his collection was stolen. Oh, oh no. He, he's been collecting longer than I have. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, so I've, you know, so he, he was like, hey, uh, I could use one if, you know, he, I'm like, okay, I'll just send it to you. You can have it. So I'm sending him that. So uh, I have another one coming on the way from Entertainment Earth. Uh, so, yeah. So that's, that's something. Uh, bu- 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 During the Target sale, I didn't realize that uh, movie Voyagers weren't included on that $20 sale. But I got uh, the MP, not pardon me, the uh, Studio Series uh, 51 Voyager, uh, Voyager Megatron. It's pretty. Shiny. It is very shiny and nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I actually really, I think it looks great. I haven't opened it yet. I have not had time. Oh, I, got, I completely forgot. And I got to cover something else. I'll, go, I'll make that last. Uh, actually, I'll gush first. So, so, it's been a busy week for me. So... I'll say this. Uh, I was just looking at uh, Amazon for Transformers stuff. And I saw this gun that transforms into a dinosaur. It's a laser pistol. There's like a line of them or something. It's awesome. I know. I'm sorry. It's awesome. I love this thing. Uh, There's a couple different ones. I'm going to pick the others up. Uh, It's like 15 bucks. And how it transforms, it, it doesn't really transform so much. Uh, it has arms and legs, and it comes with like a, uh, uh, an electric uh, driver, and you attach the legs to it, almost kind of like, um, how would I put it? Like in a Ma- Mazinger Z or something, something, a scene like that, or in a, maybe in a Gundam, if like they're like attaching pieces to something before it launches, it's kind of like that. Hmm. Uh, it's just awesome. It's like 15 bucks, and I love it. Spider Bob oh. says, I think Brian has a mutation where he has 48 hours in a day. Otherwise, I don't know how he gets it all done. Well, Spider Bob, he doesn't sleep. So <laughs> it's almost like having 48 hours in a day. This is true. Um, <laughs> bu- 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 so I was at um, this weekend, happened to be the 29th of February Saturday, on Saturday. And I was at a local comic shop called Sailfish. They're building one near me, uh, but that was at the one in Winston Salem. Don, Don has issues with that place because they tried to lowball him on some Transformers like. 25 years ago. Um, <laughs> but I was there. Being the February 29th, um, they had a deal where they were doing a sale for 29% off of like stuff, including Transformers in their, their display case. And other than the Diaclone stuff they had in their case, I pretty much had everything. 
Uh, but one thing, believe it or not, I didn't actually have because I parted with it when I was purging years ago like an idiot was a G1 Stunicon set. So it was priced at 100 bucks. So I got it for $71. I got a complete Minasaur. Nice. Yeah. I, it, Brian, do they, do they still have that Diaclone Ratchet? I texted you about a couple, about two years ago, that Diaclone Ratchet. Do they, do they still they have that? They had the Diaclone Slag. And right. I think they might have still have the Ratchet. I just don't have that much. Like, there are things I would rather have first. And this was a big hole in my collection because. For whatever reason, when I was purging like 15 years ago, this is something like I don't need that anymore, and I just never got it again. So I can now close that loop. Uh, let's see here. Let me complain for a minute, then I'll gush. <laughs> MP48 Loud Convoy. It looks nice. It's it's pretty in robot mode. Like, in robot mode. the pro- So, obviously, with Masterpiece toys, there's like basically like two things. Sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller than the original toy. Like Convoy happens to be one where it's smaller. Uh, in robot mode, it, it's, its lack of stature makes it way less impressive to me than it should be. I think it should be like half again as tall as it is. It's not going to be. But I feel like it needs to be. Because... Otherwise, I don't know. I just think I think of Lego Convoy is powerful, but it just the the toy doesn't exude power. It it's pretty. The paint is really nice. The juxtaposition of the bright red paint against the white plastic is striking in robot mode. But I just I don't know. I, I have some major 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 issues with it. Uh, one. Um, and John, John in the chat, our internal chat, mentioned that a friend of ours, his uh, was scuffed up. And General Technos on Twitter, he was telling me that his uh, has paint rubbing issues. Uh, mine so far is good, and I'm not going to mess with it. Transformation was fine. There's one thing about it I really hate transformation wise, and I'll get into. But um, the, the the beast mode sucks. The beast mode. I, I joked on Twitter that it was a uh, uh, undocumented fan mode that just happened to be pa- packed in that way when it shipped. My problem with it is that, you know, it's based on the anime. They could have fudged it. It's not like it's a Dotson. It's not like it's, you know, <laughs> it's not like it's, it's not like there's a physical reference that they had to go to to match it. There's a million ways that they could have, like, honestly, the problem with it, it could be a brick. There's just some more panels they needed to add. It's not even like it was. It's not even like, like, big convoy. I love big convoy. Big convoy's beast mode is a brick, but you know what? It works because it's shaped like a freaking woolly mammoth. It doesn't move very much, but it's shaped like at it at all. At all, Lyo convoy, it's shaped kind of like a lion with huge gaps everywhere. They love putting panels in the Masterpiece toys. They could have added some more panels to cover up those holes. And it's just, it's absurd that it's, that it looks that way. Our buddy Eric, who's often on the show, was like, hey, look at this. What did you expect? You know, it's, look at that uh, lion mode. It wouldn't be that hard to make it halfway competent. Like the Lyo Convoy from Beast Wars 2nd had a crappy lion mode. I also had a crappy robot mode. It's a crappy toy. But uh, it is a crappy <laughs> toy. But uh, this one, robot mode, is is, is nice. They, just to make it slight, satisfactory, they could have just done a couple of things to make the beast mode, you know, passable. But they didn't. Uh, it really falls into what we've been observing about Masterpiece for the last year or maybe two, where more and more often we're seeing that one mode of the two is being highly prioritized and the other one is basically just having to get by with whatever is left over after it's not in that primary mode anymore. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right. Like, like masterpiece black arachnia is compromised. It's not the best, but I don't hate it It, in hand. It's very, it's, it's, it's very serviceable in hand. In fact, that's one of my favorite toys that came out all year last year. Uh, but, um, most other masterpiece toys, at least in 
the alt mode, it looks good. You know, they, they go through crazy, they go through crazy compromises to in transformation to go from a okay looking vehicle mode, even if it's stupid and it has fake wheels or something. They go through, uh, they go through, you know, a, a gigantic process to get it from, you know, good looking robot to good looking vehicle mode. And or beast mode, and you get there with this. They didn't even try, they didn't even try to make a decent looking beast mode. It like it doesn't even deserve to be masterpiece almost in the sense the fact that the the beast mode is such a failure. It really, I mean, it's kind of a stark contrast against Masterpiece Tigatron, who we got good beast mode pictures of just in the last couple days. Like, that's a much more solid and complete looking, you know, big cat animal mode. So our Nescord in the chat was like, hey, Brian, they could add more panels to cover that up. Everyone, this thing is a panel nightmare. It's really not. Compared to other Masterpiece, compared to, obviously, the, it's half the price. Well, no, he's, he's saying that's what everybody would be saying if they added more panels. Oh, gotcha, yeah. But, you know, it's not like it would be that many. Like, there's some really novel ways they hide panels with this thing. Um, well, and if you think about how, what they did with um, Beast Wars Megatron, that Masterpiece, yeah. like... There's a ton oh, of God, panels on that to make the dinosaur mode very solid and like full looking. But even though there's, you know, unrelated scary parts, the panel process on that is not really that bad. It was actually a fairly elegant uh, engineering arrangement. And you could not tell all those panels were really there when it was in robot mode. If they had applied that kind of engineering to Leo Convoy, I think the overall outcome still would have been very good. Yeah, like the transformation's not bad at all compared to other masterpieces. The one thing I really hate about it, though, I absolutely hate this shoulder assembly with the lion head. It is like I, I was so afraid that it was going to break throughout the process. Uh, and it goes through this horrible, like nightmarish Hieronymus Bosch style, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's horrible. Like it's just, it's just horrific. And I was so afraid it was going to break. And it's just so like <laughs> with the original toy, there's one lion head and it works in both <laughs> modes and it works fine. This, they had to have a second one. So you have to go through this horrible process where you spin this around and hide it. And I just kept thinking I was going to break it. Uh, like they over engineered that and didn't, they didn't over engineer just hiding panels like in legs I just don't understand this toy. If you just buy these for like the robot mode, you're going to love it probably. And that's probably what they're assuming is the case more than not. I, I like transformers better when they're packaged in their alt mode. That's to me how they should be handled. Like if you have to focus on having a nice looking alt mode in package, you will do that. And then you will make a, a serviceable robot mode. Uh, yeah, but like, I this you know this is way cheaper than MP44. I think it was like 140 or something through Amazon Japan. I hate to say that's not, but compared to other MP masterpieces, you know that's on the lower end. It's ridiculous, but it's on the lower end. But they could have just done a little more engineering to this to make at least a halfway serviceable lion mode. It's not even as good as the crappy lion mode that's in the Beast Wars Second toy. Oh, the question he, uh, people keep asking. We bought is mentioning this. Is the lion head pure gold plastic? Uh, yeah, I think it is. Now the question, uh, the question is, is will it break in three years? Uh, I don't know. <sighs> I don't think that they've solved the gold plastic problem. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's gold plastic and some paint. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any questions about this before I move on? I know this is like the thing people have been talking about all week. No. Okay. The uh, thing that I really wanted to, to uh, gush about, John DeLuna, Saint, humanitarian. <laughs> See if this comes through. Um, he mentioned a while back that he had the killer whale, which is a grail for me when it comes to G.I. Joe vehicles. Like, I have three vehicles that I really want, one, or three playsets or vehicles that I wanted, which is the killer whale, the uh, terror drone, and uh, the defiant shuttle complex. The flag's not on there. Remember, I actually turned down a free USS flag like an idiot, but I did. Because I just don't have room for it. I'm still kicking myself for that. But I've wanted this killer whale uh, for years, and John had one. He's like, yeah, I got one at my parents' house. And I'm like, I can send it to you. And I'm like, what? Are you serious? What? Huh? It, it 
it arrived last week. And uh, let's hope the photo comes through. Yep, right there. So yep. uh, it's complete. In fact, there's a piece in it that I couldn't identify. Uh, it, it came with a box. It is just flipping beautiful and amazing. And uh, it like literally, literally made my day. It's just the best. I love this. Yeah, I love it. See, yeah, because see, Brian, that's what I wanted Earthrise Megatron to be like something completely new from Megatron. A hovercraft, you know, and that, yeah, I mean, because he's got, like, like I said, he's got the sea mode, sea spray? he's got a land mode. No, I mean, just you know, like like a, 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 a an assault hovercraft. But I, I was in my head, the well is what I was basing that on. Something like you know, like not, close to like a tank, but not a tank would be unique enough. Like I don't really think of craft. I don't really think of like landing craft as being like a tank. I'm, I'm saying the shape, the general shape would be tank like enough in general, and then but, but it'd be something. I mean, just different. make him a land rover then. Yeah, you know what? You know what Megatron should be? Uh, sh- should be uh, movie Galvatron. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, John. John's amazing. Uh, our buddy Alan uh, Young uh, on Twitter is Toy Box Comics. Uh, when he heard this news and what uh, John had sent uh, Rob, he had asked if John was dying, which scared <laughs> me for a second. But John is not dying. So, yeah, that's amazing. It's like Kim wasn't as surprised as, or as excited as I was, but I, I was. It was like uh, it was, I was kind of wondering about that. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is one of the instances where I told her, "Hey, I didn't pay anything for it," and she believed it. I think. <laughs> I hope. Well, I mean, next next time too, if you see John, he can back you up on that at yeah. least. But will she believe him? Yeah, she believes John. <laughs> she'll believe. She'll believe Jamie. Ah. Uh, uh so I'm not a lot in news diecast. I didn't really want to talk about that Zeta Unicron thing because we don't know anything about it. But do you want to talk about it real quick because people are sharing photos everywhere? Oh, yeah. Um, so the Zeta Unicron, or core star that uh, went dark for a while because of the HasLab project, uh, has reemerged under a new name of uh, Studio Cell, uh, where they're showing actual color prototype it's like crappy photos. photo it's like crappy stupid looking photos are the ones circulating not like yeah with no head <laughs> well, they, did, they didn't they show the head completely not the same product well yeah it's not the same product because there's no head being shown <laughs> and there's also no uh no is that the reason wings or rings is that the reason i that didn't register with me i i think it's just kind of them being funny yeah, like, this is a completely different thing. This isn't uh, Core Star or Unicron or anything at all. This is yeah. a completely new, unrelated product from a uh, entirely different company that's not Zeta Toys. It doesn't even have a head. <laughs> wow. Okay. Is that, is that the? Is that just the collar sitting on top of the neck? It kind of looked like the head was like turned upside down and fit and set down into the torso or something for transformation. Uh, yeah, it I think it may well be something like that. Either that, or you they know, just I, took it off for the photos. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I saw that. Maybe they're playing like it's like a giant bot bot kind of thing. You know, maybe they're just trying to play around like it's a giant bot bot. And there's also the one with the uh, with the arms just sticking out of the uh, planet eater mode. So <laughs> it's clearly not not a Unicron. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's funny. I, I, you know, a lot of people doubted me because I was saying, you know, this thing was still going to happen um, from my my resources at Taobao that kept telling me it was going to happen. I didn't know it was going to change names, um, but I would guess this is the same people and just a different name. Well, it certainly appears to be the same thing. Yeah, it definitely is the same toy. That that yeah. that is for sure. Yeah, so uh, for anybody, you know, who is wanting this to still happen, looks like you'll still get your chance at it some way or another. Yeah. 
this was, uh, you know, this is actually now beyond prototype. I, I guess this would be at a, uh, a test shot stage. I mean, this, yeah, this looks like a very late test shot stage. This would be more of what I would call like a production proof. Yes. Yes, exactly. So, uh, yeah, uh, this st- still may, might happen after all. Cool. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. What? else chris had mentioned the tigertron so mp50 tigertron uh we have uh photos and dear goodness gracious it looks amazing Mm -hmm. and even the beast mode looks good i mean it looks like like again going back to the eric conversation it's it's unfair to eric because eric's not here and he can't defend his thing but you know it's my podcast i can do what i want so um (laughs) eric was like hey you know look at this uh look at this uh tigertron mode and compared it to uh, compared it to the beast con the Ohio convoys like hey it's two different things it's like yeah there's like actual expectations of what you know Tigatron has to look like and they have to work within those constraints and they nailed it that's way harder than you know just making a crappy look you know halfway decent looking lion so uh, <laughs> refuting Eric on my show sorry Eric I love you you can come on we should do a debate podcast we'll come on and debate that Lyo Convoy toy. Or not. Nobody will care next week. But uh, this... I think instead you should have a rap battle over Leo Convoy. Ooh. He would win. I would be really bad at that. Uh, that's why it would be funny. Yeah, but uh, darn it. This looks phenomenal. Yeah, that's really good. I cannot yeah. wait to get it. And even, um, so, like, we know it's mostly using the same engineering as Cheetor. Obviously, all new parts because it's completely different larger toy but like they did seem to address one of the problems with cheat or at least going by these pictures where it kind of had the sway back thing Mm -hmm. uh from one of the transformation joints not being super tight on that like this is a lot more uh straight and solid looking in the mid body yeah i mean just like some of the poses they're getting out of this too are really fantastic you know if if i was an out if i was an outsider looking in this would look like one of those uh, like a Revel Tech or a Figure Arts, because they've done like Figure Arts Lightning McQueen. It doesn't transform, but it's got a lot of you know moving parts. I would almost think they were doing like a, just a a line of opposable animals for people that like Maybe collecting. You know, Figma, not Figure Arts, Don. Uh, no, there, okay, I think Figma. there was a, a Revel Tech uh, Lightning McQueen. Yeah, no, but he said uh, a Figure Art Lightning McQueen, and uh, I got okay. that right. Yeah. But 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 in uh but in alt mode, he looks like an actual tiger. I mean, you know, I know he's a robot, but he still looks natural in those poses, he which something great. Cheetor never pulled never pulled off. This and he's got guy. he's got accessories uh, from uh, before the storm, which was late in the first season, where he was hacking into the Predacon computer and had the. Megatron Rubik's Cube head puzzle thing to break the encoding. Like he comes with parts to recreate that. So he's got a little model of Megatron head as an accessory. Do we know what the SRP is on this? Uh, he's around the same price as Megatron was. Oh, that's one reason that this looks great in both modes. But I mean, it's also very big. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh, I believe Leo Convoy is around than the Chino? same. Yeah. Yeah. Much. Um, Oh. I believe Leo Convoy is about the same height as Optimus Primal. The, the, those I have pieces, put I think, them are side by the side, but height. I think you're right, yeah. Um, whereas Tigatron is like at least head and shoulders taller than Optimus. Hmm. So can't yeah. wait. Yeah, Tigatron is much bigger than Cheetor, which is why I say we know it uses a lot of the same engineering, but it is 100% completely new because all the parts are bigger and it's doing some extra things like having the actual beast mode head on the robot chest instead of a substitute part. Yeah. That's interesting. I, Which they I can just get away expected. with because they have more room for the engineering. Yeah. I just expected it was the same size as Cheetor. No, it, yeah, it's bigger. It's pretty phenomenal. So, yeah, but it's, it's somewhere in the like 22, 24,000 yen range. Okay, so we also that's that's one thing. So uh, we have photos of wave three of Earthrise, and we got uh, photos of Trailbreaker or Trail Cutter and uh, Sunstreaker. I really like Sunstreaker. I really like them both. 
but uh are they calling it trail cutter again I, yeah they're calling it trail cutter i believe that's weird because the combiner wars one came out with trail breaker i'm pretty sure oh let me go look at the previous world page real quick because yeah yeah i thought it was a copy and paste um let's see here boy that sure does look like a wheel jack it is i yeah. mean yeah. it i mean that's fairly plain it it's doing some things differently um you know wheeljack uses the the top surface of the car is the front of the lower legs this is using the underside which is making me really curious how the feet are working because like the it's the hood of the car but the headlights are on the outside of the feet um which would if you just like folded that up and reversed them the headlights should be like on the inside middle but they're not so i'm really interested to see how that engineering is put together and for the record the previous Um, listing does say trail breaker both in the uh both in the uh, title and the text. I have to say I'm a lot more interested in Trailbreaker. And not just because he's one of my favorite characters, but he just looks so much more of a of a solid figure. But again, it could be some of the hollowness that I'm seeing in that pose they've got Sunstreaker in. I know Trailbreaker has some hollowness, of course. Now, usually it doesn't bother me, but the Trailbreaker just looks the big old chest. That Autobot symbol just right there, just like up front, like, yeah, you know, it's like, it just looks fabulous. I think yeah. these are on Amazon already, too. I was looking, I wasn't able to find them on Amazon in the last couple of days. Um, I know Target has them up. Um, some of the other, you know, normal retail channels have them up. I was trying to turn them up on Amazon you know, for obvious reasons, but my searches weren't really getting me anywhere. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Though Sunstreaker is definitely using Wheeljack's engineering, but I don't think from those promo renders, I'll say it this way from those renders, it does not look immediately like they're literally sharing any parts, but it's absolutely the same engineering um, with a few tweaks to it. Um, whereas run amok who is in the same wave and transforms in a similar ish way. Like you go from a car mode that's similar looking to a robot mode that has similar features. But as far as I can tell those two wheel, Jack Sunstreaker to run amok, they are unrelated. It's just like highly coincidental that they have the two things in one wave that basically have the same kind of looking robot mode. I would actually assume if anything, like after when the muck becomes runabout, that engineering could get reused as a tracks, maybe. That's the one figure I really thought was coming and I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it, I mean, it probably is because it was on that uh, fan vote and... Yes. Tracks and needle nose are the only things from that that are unaccounted for at this point. And we know from the most recent fan vote last year that they were trying to get needle nose out there again. So somebody is wanting needle nose to happen. So I think tracks and needle nose will come, you know, in the next year or 18 months, one way or the other. I'm trying to get where I got trail cutter from because since I've been doing these news postings with photos uh, for the uh, news desk, yeah. I copy and paste so that I don't just write, you know, not not even spelling, but like I like I, I put the specific name like um, Daddy O instead of Big Daddy, just to be mm-hmm. just like for SEO, I guess, if nothing else. I have no idea where that came from, unless they changed the way it was listed on previews. Well, the first time I looked at the previews listing, which was as far as I know, within you know thirty minutes of anybody knowing it was there, it said Trailbreaker. That's why I you know, ask you about the trail cutter thing when we started. Yeah, I don't know. They never freaking call it trail cutter. Yeah. Okay, cool. Is it it possible that the uh, the image has a file name of trail cutter and you took it from that? Oh. Well, I wrote (laughs) trailbreaker.jpg. Okay, well, then there's no telling what happened there. Uh, Let's see here. Open image, new tab. Uh, it doesn't have anything on it. Okay. Oh, well. We shall see Galvatron. We shall see. So, what? Oh, sorry. Is that it? Oh, okay. So, this, the sad bit of news. We'll, we'll wrap up news here. Uh, yesterday, as of recording, so March 3rd, 
uh, David Wise, a uh, writer who contributed to Transformers among many other things, most notably, I guess, Ninja Turtles, uh, passed away of lung cancer. So that that that's really that that's unfortunate. One thing yeah, I was reading guess. about him that I found interesting, he is the only writer to ever win an Emmy for writing Star Trek. He he wrote really? an episode of uh animated series? Yeah, animated series that that won an an uh Emmy for writing. Which for episode best, was best, it? Best children's program. That I do not remember off the top of my head. But yeah, he is the only writer to ever win a non-technical Emmy for uh Star Trek. Wow. Yeah. I got real lucky. He was at two, I think two, at least two different bot cons and I got to talk to him both times. Uh, super nice man. And he didn't mind. I told him, you know, rebirth is one of my favorite things he's done, you know, for all, for all the flaws. It's one of my favorites. We talked about, um, uh, the key to vector Sigma. We talked about war Dawn. major, major episodes in the, in the continuity. Uh, we also discussed, like, he, I don't think he wrote it, but we also discussed, like, God Gambit with religion and Transformers. And I think he knew the guy that, you know, again, I, I don't I don't think he, uh, I don't I don't think he wrote God Gambit. I can't remember off the top of my head. But just a super nice guy. Really liked interacting with all the fans. And uh, just, it, it's a shame. It's a shame. But uh, he gave us so much stuff. And I said this on Twitter a little while ago when I found out that, the episodes he did really added to the lore of Transformers, and I don't mm-hmm. think you could – what he contributed to the fandom cannot be understated. It, it's just it's just so important to the history of the, of the brand, and it's a shame we lost him. Yeah. And it really is. Oh, man. Okay, so uh, bummer. Uh, So that's really unfortunate, but I guess let's move on. I want to go to a question. We're not going to answer the question here exactly, Uh, but uh, it's a relevant question that came to us via our contact form at uh, tfradio.net. It is from listener Jaden. It's like, hey, I'm a big fan of RSC and have been listening to you guys on Spotify since 2018. You're the one. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. I, I actually don't have a clue how many people listen on Spotify. Um, I've been wondering what your advice is on displaying my Transformers. Hope you can help me out. So I really love this question. And uh, I was actually having a conversation on Discord about this a couple of days ago. And like we we're talking about detolfs and things like that. And I only have a couple like less than five things that I would ever think about even putting under glass. But then you see other people who put everything under glass, like, you know, everything like generations, uh, thrilling 30, you know, whatever, or something like that. And I just, it's, it, there's a lot of, uh, different ways people approach this. So, uh, we had a question that came through on, it's a Don deal. I think, uh, where we, uh, landed that we were going to do uh, like an RFC extra podcast on the, the general topic. The question was, um, Hey, I, I think it was from Mark Alley and uh, Mark was like, Hey, you know, how do I uh, purge my collection? How do I get rid of things? And I think what we're going to do is talking to uh, Matt uh, on our mailing list, Melvar. And he's like, Hey, you know, I've never really purged, but what I can do is help focus my collection in, in respect to um, in respect to, displays. And I think we're probably going to try to kill two birds with one stone with that and do a podcast, an RFC extra and put that up uh, out there in respect to one, like focusing your collection, you know, getting down to what's important to you, what you want to display and displaying it. So uh, Jaden, I think here in the next couple of weeks, we will have that out there. It'll be at uh, tfradio.net. We'll share it out on Twitter. It'll be on the website. It'll be in our podcast feed. So thanks for the question. We appreciate that. Like normally, like questions come through and I keep I hold on to them, but this one was like, "Hey, I can plug that podcast we're going to do." So sometimes you hold on to them so long that we just completely forget we had them in the first place. I had one, so if people out there want to leave us a review on iTunes or whatever, I'd appreciate it. 
typically what people do is they wait until they're pissed off at you for something like an opinion they didn't like or something, you know, in one case we had a listener who I've been was planning on getting to his, uh, to his, uh, question and I just was never able to squeeze it in. He became so upset about it that he like started posting things on our Facebook and left negative iTunes reviews about how we ignore our fans and stuff. And, you know, Hey, it just, it's one of those things you put yourself out there in the public. People are going to do what they do. Yeah. Sometimes it's just hard to get to questions. Sometimes I forgot, but, uh, yeah. Uh, iTunes, that'd be great. So, um, let's see here. Speaking of, uh, speaking of things out there, uh, you can uh, use our Amazon link at tfradio.net slash Amazon. It'll help us out. We've got to get Rob and Chris paid as they're coming on as paid contributors. Uh, it's one way uh, you can buy anything, toilet paper, toothpaste. I don't want to, I don't want to joke about like the coronavirus or anything, but like there's certain things you can't buy right now, like hand sanitizer. That stuff's gone. So, but you can buy most other things at Amazon. Of course, you can also support us directly, and we would love you to buy anything from Amazon. That'll help us out. And that, that'll, that you know, fund the show as well as uh, Chris and Rob's contributions. But uh, we're also doing Patreon at patreon.com slash TF radio. We have three tiers, um, and we are doing the new promotion, the full-time toy detectives. We're going to do all the stuff that we mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, but we're going to start promoting the heck out of that this weekend, run that for a couple months. And hopefully it, again, it's only like an extra 250 bucks a month. That's only like if we get people at the touch tier and most of our patrons are actually at the touch tier. We love you. But seriously, like most of the people that are patrons are at the highest tier. I am just blown away by that. Um, See, we, we literally can't believe how much you love us. I know, right? Uh, but uh, like, we're also slightly concerned for you. But you know, in the meantime, thank you. Yeah. So, like, like I said, our goal is uh, our goal is uh, to get another like two hundred fifty bucks to get us to about five hundred a month to help you know cover costs between other sources of income and stuff to uh, to do that. But you know, as we uh, as that grows, uh, we'll be able to do more with Robin Chris, and you know, I, that'd be great patreon.com slash tf radio and of course you can buy a shirt tfradio.net slash shirt or shirts either one works we have awesome shirts love the shirts okay i'm wearing one right now my rsc shirt so also thank you to our touched patrons at the touch tier you get mentioned every week hopefully we can add some more people to this uh you also have a credit at uh, tfradio.net slash credits. I need to put up the uh, credits that we're doing for the inaugural patrons. I think they're up there. I need to go back and check. But uh, well, for any every patron who backs uh, the uh, Patreon during this promotion, that includes everybody that's current as well, will get listed as uh, uh, boosters of the full-time toy detectives. And you'll also get plugs on blog posts as well as in the show. But uh, touch patrons, thank you so much. Kevin Dorsey. Sean Bratton, Jacob Owen Lucia, Sean Hamilton, or Meet Pac Man, or Spider Ham Molten, or whatever he's called tonight. I forgot already. Uh, Jason uh, W. Italian Rye. Spider Man? Yes. Mm -hmm. Jason W. Rye, Mike Mallory, Jason Hiley, Jonathan James, Matthew Dedman, Hector Bones, Brian Cooper, and Nathan Sampy. Thank you guys so much. You're awesome. Uh, you can. Find all of the stuff that we do pretty much at tfradio.net. I, I think I was looking today, and there's like 2,500 podcasts posted there. Man. I know. That's staggering. Yeah, 2,500. That's not just RSC. That's like all the shows that we've done over the years back when we were trying to do not just Transformers, but focus on what you know. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at TF Radio. At Facebook at facebook.com slash TF Radio, Instagram, TF Podcast, YouTube, Roku, uh, at TF Radio.net slash Roku, Fire TV, TF Radio.net slash Fire TV. Uh, in all this rebranding, we're also rebranding our uh, Amazon Alexa skill. And <laughs> that will, uh, I'm actually working on publishing that. And I'll be honest with you, there are people out there that still use our app that I developed in 2012. I'm working on pulling together a new app. We did our app like in 2012 
And there's been like two versions since then. I'm really working on getting a new app out there, um, at least for Android. I don't know how to do the iTunes stuff, but Aww. on the Android side, yeah. Um, so uh, hopefully that'll be something I do here in the next month or two, get the, the new app out. But uh, so yeah, between Roku, Fire TV, an app, the Alexa, Apple Podcast, Spotify, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Stitcher. Jaden, again, is our person on Spotify. Thank you again. You can pretty much find us everywhere. Uh, the show notes for this episode are tfradio.net slash 664. And you can leave us a voicemail at 931-99-GOBOT, 931-994-6268. And uh, you can, if you want to direct questions to Don Deal, just note that in there. If not, note it for RFC and we'll get it done. John Deloon is not here. He's at that John D everywhere. Rob Springer is at zonebase.org and at Robo Rob Springer. And I think next week he'll have a new episode of Zone Base. So that's pretty awesome. I am on Twitter at BKilby. I have that contest going on. I'm giving away the visualizers. I'm also on the Instagram at Brian Kilby, and you can find my website at briankilby.com. I should have a new episode of um, the How Was Your Weekend podcast with Wendy here in a week or two. I'm really excited about it. So uh, Spider Bob earlier in the chat was like, uh, uh, you know, Brian must have 48 hours in the day. A podcast topic that I'm doing is how does Brian maintain productivity with three kids and you know, all this stuff. So I'm actually excited about that. And also it, it'll be, it'll be uh, two things. It'll be one. How, how does Brian maintain productivity? The other topic from that episode will be Brian's most embarrassing moments. That's one to listen to. So, so like, uh, obviously we don't want to give away any like prime show content here, but um, in the course of these conversations, how much overlap does there end up being? The embarrassing moments. How many of how many of your embarrassing moments have to do with, you know, your your hyper productivity and you know So this is a spoiler. So I, I, I'm gonna talk about things about different levels. And you know, one thing I, I'm gonna talk about stuff that should be embarrassing, but isn't that embarrassing. Like two o'clock one morning, I was breaking down a stage uh and for a concert that we put on for the, the nonprofit that I worked for. And like on the backside, like my pants just completely fell down. You is just like, you saw mm. everything. And it's, I just said, I'm like, it's two o'clock in the morning. Everybody's butts look the same. Let's just keep going. <laughs> and, you know, I was, I just, you know, we had a lot, a lot of work to do, had to get it, had to get it done. And, uh, yeah. So that's, that's kind of, that's kind of overlap. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. 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 Uh, Rob, how do people get a hold of you? Okay, on Twitter, you can find me at Figure Reviewers for Toys and Rob Flails for Video Games when I remember to post things to the correct accounts. Um, Rob That's Flails hard. Is the, I've had that problem, too. Yeah. Uh, Rob Flails is the Twitter account for Flail Throughs, my YouTube channel, which currently covers Gundam Battle Operation 2 for the PS4 free-to-play Gundam game. This last week, we got back to Zeta Gundam Era Mobile Suits with the Marasai. Um, not bad. And uh, if you like what I do there, I also have my own Patreon, patreon.com slash flailthroughs. You can uh, request various uh, mobile suit color combinations and weapon configurations there for a couple of bucks a month. And also, of course, I have an Amazon wish list at tfradio.net slash claylist. And if you go through that link, uh, that will uh, benefit not only me by getting stuff, but Brian by getting money for stuff. And Rob and Chris by getting paid. Yes. So, you know, ben it benefits all comes us back twice. Around. Oh, yeah, double yeah. dipping. Double mm -hmm. dipping. Yeah. Double dipping is only acceptable when you have a single serving portion of whatever you're dipping into and nobody's sharing with you. This is true. Chris. But it's still a bad habit, so don't do that. <laughs> uh, for toy photography, uh, galleries, uh, guides, other things, my thoughts on double dipping. Uh, playwithphotography.com is the main website. I also have social media to the same ends at uh, at playwithphotos on Twitter or Instagram.com slash playwithphotography. If you like my toy-related work uh, that I do or you want to show support, help me do more of it, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash playwithphotos and um, contribute for as little as $2 per month. There's higher tiers with more rewards to them if you're so inclined. Uh, you can follow me personally on Twitter at ChrisRTXV. I uh, highly encourage everybody to speak up and encourage me to actually make a damn sales list because I did pay my taxes this past weekend. And I owe ouch. taxes. 
Same. Yeah. I, so I did pretty well last year, which means I did pretty badly at tax time this year. So I do need to try to recoup some of those costs. So yes, please, if you're at all interested in buying like, uh, you know, recent-ish or slightly more outdated generations Transformers stuff and a few assorted other things like, yes, encourage me to make a sales list and actually get some of that stuff out there because I can be really bad at self-motivation sometimes, which I'm sure is exactly what Brian wants to hear as soon as he's agreed to pay me to work for him. I'm not, you're not um, working for me, you're a partner. Yeah, I, I know, but it, it goes with the, you know, the whole line of the joke. Um, I failed to mention that though at the beginning, like you guys aren't employees, it's, you're partners. It's a partnership, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, uh, much like Rob, I have my Amazon wish list, which I did plug earlier, tfradio.net slash Chris list. Uh, I get cool stuff. Uh, Kilby gets podcast support money, and eventually that will wind its way back to me in the form of payroll. So, you know, it, it helps three ways now instead of just two. So that's yes. an even better value. If you if you don't, you're literally leaving money on the table. Don? <laughs> I love each other. Oh, I, I just can... love it. <laughs> you broke down. Yeah. That's good. Don's very well, tired. Don's worked a lot of overtime. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I guess I'll go. I'm can be reached on Twitter at HMRC, the number four EVR. Also there's TF radio.net, uh, Amazon link for Massey attack. Uh, oh, I just added something with... recently. Yes. What'd you, what'd you uh, do? <laughs> need to go back and check. Did we buy all the death head, death head shoes from there? I think we took those off of there at Don's request because you know, above all, we don't want this to be something that's antagonistic to Don. It's supposed to be something that's fun and you know, it's a nice thing for Don. It's not a thing to do to Don. Yeah, well, it's both. So I put the RC on there from Earthrise, but this Golden Girls themed fleece blanket is amazing. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I'll I'll tell everybody right now that if anyone gets me the Golden Girls fleece blanket. I will be giving that to my girlfriend They'll because be she's a that. huge Golden Girls will fan. Give her and this? Oh, well, you got to keep her there, Don. What about yeah. this uh, katana that I put on there? Will you oh, give wait, that to before her? That, before that, no, though, no, do don't it, give, give Don any weapons. Before that, though, we have an obligation here. Girlfriend. <laughs> girlfriend. Well, I already have two swords in the apartment already, so a third would be nice to have one wait, in another room. What swords do you have, Don? Just some, uh, one was given to me by a friend several years ago when he was moving overseas and couldn't take it with him. Okay. Another one of the, just one of them, one of them flea market stores that looks cool. This is a flea market store. Really, yeah. I didn't, I didn't uh, think you had an interest in that, Don. No, I mean, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those that it, it looks like it would be something out of, you know, World of Warcraft. It's just, it's more for just me to pull out every now and then say, that's pretty, and put it back in the, put it back in the scabbard and put yeah. it behind. The word yeah, actually, behind. actually, Rob has a couple of themed swords on his Amazon wish list too. If anybody's in a sword buying mood, sweet. Yeah, I actually I've been and, looking to buy uh, a sword, new sword uh, instead. Of, like I have like one that's four forty C surgical stainless steel, which is not a good steel for a sword. Uh, it's too <laughs> fragile. Like I've been looking to get one that's spring steel, and they're actually relatively inexpensive. They're like more like one hundred and fifty bucks instead of like a thirty dollar uh, flea market sword. Right. Yeah. And one other thing I'll share is that if anybody, I'm, I'm not saying you need to, but I'm saying if anyone buys me the Cadbury eggs coming up for Easter, I will be sharing them with my coworkers. Fifteen dollars. I, don't need, yeah, yeah, I, don't, I don't need another box of Cadbury eggs sitting in my refrigerator, taunting me, calling me to eat them. And I'll be in a diabetic coma twitching on okay, the floor. Send him the so my, my Don then. is diabetic and they don't sell insulin on Amazon yet. So yeah, <laughs> maybe just, you know, well, just I'm go type late on two. I'm, I'm tight too. Okay, so good. Not, yeah. yeah but well, I they mean, don't sell metformin you know, on Amazon yet either. Yeah. So. I, I take a thousand milligrams of metformin a day, so I don't need Cadbury eggs. Like metformin is like, I give up. 200 packets you know, of Miracle you know. Whip is on Massey yeah. tax wish list. But, but like I said, that's if a terrible thing to do to anybody. Cadbury. Come on, Brian. <laughs> hey, well, you know, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a cheese sandwich when we get done here. I'm about to starve, so I've got cheese and Miracle Whip, so I'm good. Oh dear God, die cast. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 my wait, wish. Wait. I have to ask a question. Die, uh, Don, is it real cheese or is it Velveeta? It's like the Walmart version of the Deli Deluxe that Kraft does. 
Oh yeah. I okay, buy so that. It, it's yeah, it's more like real cheese than Velveeta. Okay, but, I, but, but I, I, but I, but I have sort to of say, accept that. I have to say that I was a little stressed over the weekend with all the with the overtime I've been putting in. So over Saturday and Sunday, I did eat a two pound block of Velveeta in. Don, two why days. would you ever admit that publicly? Because it was good, and I was stressed, and I needed something <laughs> to relax with. As a oh, fellow God. stress eater, Don, I feel you. That's not that's not my jam in terms of stress eating, but I I really do get you. If you eat that much Velveeta in that short of time, it 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 will literally be your jam. Yeah, actually, it's never bothered me. It's, it's never actually had any effect on me. Uh, so I'm I'm fine. But that was that was okay. the kind of weekend I had. I can't. So it please was a, update it was, Don's it was character two, sheet it wherever it is with Velveeta <laughs> immunity. Oh yeah, it was a two. It was a two pound block of Velveeta weekend. That that's that's what that was. Wait, I was totally I totally missed that. That is horrible. Yeah. Okay, Diecast. All right. Uh since we're talking about wish lists, you can look at my wish list at tfradio.net slash diecast list. Uh please check out my review of the Netflix Siege Deluxe Figures minus Chromia. That is on tfradio.net slash reviews, and you can follow me on Twitter at Diecast2 or on Facebook at Reviews by Diecast. Cool. We missed anything? Mm. I missed the two pounds of Velveeta. Dear Lord. You know, I used to I used to like Velveeta more as a like thing to put in other things. Like it used to be great for making macaroni and cheese or you know other my mom actually used to put a couple slices into the chili just to kind of uh, make it a little bit smoother and richer. But, like, real brand Velveeta is almost $10 a block now. The store brand stuff is comparatively garbage. Like, yeah, just get, like, Don's on the right track with his um, knockoff deli deluxe American cheese at this point for actual consumption. Yeah. Just, just do something like that. That makes good macaroni and cheese, too, honestly. I, I've done that. Okay. We'll see you next week. Don't don't eat that much Velveeta. It's just not worth it anymore. This has been Radio Free Cybertron. Visit us at tfradio.net for show notes and to subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Twitter at TF Radio for news and updates. Watch our live stream at tfradio.net slash live. Join our Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash tfradio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, TF Radio Network. Have a question or comment? Leave it on our Facebook fan page or mail it to contact at tfradio.net. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons license. Any part of this podcast can and should be redistributed, but please, proper attribution is required if you know what's good for you. Transformers, it's better than crack.